In this online lecture, let's look at a summary of hybridization and what it actually tells us about the three different ways that carbon could bond. Remember, one of the ways this top molecule has carbon making four sigma bonds around it. And we saw before that each one of these carbons is sp3 hybridized. We saw that carbon could double bond, such as in the molecule below, and the hybridization for these two carbons each is sp2 hybridized. And lastly, we saw carbon can triple bond, making these carbons sp hybridized. Now, let's focus on the carbon-carbon bond in each one of these molecules first. What I'd like you to know is the relative lengths of these bonds. Notice in the top molecule, the carbon-carbon bond is the longest, and the bottom molecule, the carbon-carbon bond is the shortest. But let's not just memorize this. Let's use hybridization to understand why. If you were to line up side by side these carbons' hybridized orbitals, they would look like this. Notice the sp3 hybridized orbital is longer, and the sp hybridized orbital on the right is more short and blunted. Why is this so? Well, remember, the sp3 hybridized orbital is technically 75% p and 25% s. In other words, remember, he's one part s and three parts p. Since he has more p than s character, he takes on the shape more like a p orbital than he does a spherical s orbital. Doing the same analysis on the sp2 hybridized orbital, he would be technically 67% p and 33% s, simply because he's a third s and two-thirds p. So he's still more p than he is s, but he has more s character than the sp3 hybridized orbital, so he's a little shorter and more blunted. And lastly, the sp hybridized orbital, of course, is half s and half p. So, in summary, the sp3 hybridized orbital has the most p character, and the sp hybridized orbital has the most s character, which is why he's the shortest and most blunted out of the three hybridized orbitals. That means that if you're an atom that's sp hybridized, since your orbitals are more shorter, that means your bonds are going to be shorter, and that's why the bottom molecule with the sp hybridized carbons would have the shortest bonds. And the top molecule with the sp3 hybridized carbons would have the longest bonds. And of course the bond for the sp2 hybridized carbons in the central molecule would be in between the two extremes. But this is not the only thing that hybridization helps us understand. We could also understand the relative strengths of these bonds. Notice the trend here. The top molecule has the weakest bonds, and the bottom molecule has the strongest bonds. And again, don't memorize this. Why is this so? We could understand this. Remember, the top molecule carbon-carbon bond is an sp3 overlap, where the bottom molecule has an sp overlap. Again, because the relative sizes and shapes of these orbitals, we can make sense of bond strength. Notice in the top bond, we have this much overlap, and in the bottom bond, we have this much overlap. We can clearly see that the bottom bond has more overlapping of the orbitals, and the top one has less overlapping. And remember, the more overlap you have of orbitals, the stronger the bond, and therefore the less overlap would give you a weaker bond. So again, hybridization makes sense of the bond strengths here. Now, the exact same analysis could be used for not just the carbon-carbon bonds, but the carbon-hydrogen bonds within these molecules, these bonds right here. The relative lengths of these bonds would mimic the carbon-carbon bonds. Notice again with the top molecule having the longest CH bonds and the bottom molecule having the shortest CH bonds. These relative bond lengths are the way they are for the same reason that we saw before, and that is, remember, sp hybridized carbons have shorter, more blunted hybridized orbitals, so they simply create shorter bonds. 
And the same thing could be said about the relative strengths of the carbon-hydrogen bonds. Again, the bottom molecule with its sp3 hybridized carbon would have more overlap than the s orbital of the hydrogen, making his CH bond the strongest bond. To master organic chemistry, we should know all the truths in this box. Notice yet again, hybridization explaining behaviors.